G'day guys, and today Shorty and I are going to review the Cats and the Crows Clash, which was a Friday night Adelaide Oval, and pretty disappointing and flat to say the least, um, after a big build-up throughout the week. Uh, Cats look pretty promising going into the game, and certainly we went in with uh, a bit of confidence, actually, that we could at least match it, and maybe, just maybe, a magical win from an amazing show, but it wasn't to be. Cats went down, and I'll have a look at the margin here. What have we got? 61 points, 10 goals. So it's, uh, again, another prelim, mate, where we've just gone down, uh, mainly due to that start, which often can catch us off by, off guard. And, um, again, that, uh, yeah, certainly didn't help us. And after those first two goals, mate, it, it uh, couldn't say game over, but you thought this, could be, this is the worst possible start ever. Um, how do you see the game? Nice. 
since we got over Sydney, but then to back it up and beat Adelaide in Adelaide was always going to be a tough task. Even tough when you give them a five goal head start. So, <laughs> yeah, not, not overly pleasing, but back to the drawing board and, and back to the draft, in my opinion. But what about yourself, mate? What did you take from it? Yeah, look, again, um, another disappointing exit in a prelim final. And, yeah, I mean, it lessens the blow slightly with the Giants going out in sort of familiar style. They had a really big win after a really disappointing loss to, you could probably say, yeah, the form team of the comp, the best team all year, you'd probably argue. So, I mean, yeah, look, there's, you don't, it doesn't make it any easier for us. Um, going out in a, in a smashing in a prelim final still hurts just as much, but... Yeah, look again. That the starts. I mean, yeah. Don't even need to say. Don't need to be an expert to say the start was where it was won and lost. It was five goals down. And we, yeah, it was nearly mission impossible from there, and it proved to be. Um, I mean, seventeen goals from turnovers is crazy. Um, yeah, which is a point they mentioned throughout the night, and that's that's a combination of inability for us to execute. A combination of Adelaide's amazing frenetic pressure and our defence looking very leaky, but that's also due to Adelaide's pressure and their run and spread, combined with their elite talent and skill to be able to execute on on the end of those goals. So there's a whole host of elements for those 17 goals and from turnovers is probably nearly nearly a record if it isn't already. Um, so yeah, that's quite impressive, but. Uh, very disappointing from our point of view to not, um, I don't know, to allow that much and to just not be set up as well behind the ball. But it's it's very tough when um, that midfield isn't on top and when Adelaide's were, Adelaide was just dominating, dominating around the stoppage and really making it hard for us. Um, once the midfield gets on top, it makes the defence look very, very nervous, very weak and uh, found wanting a lot of the time. I didn't think we played that bad, more so how good Adelaide were, but I think once we did get a slight roll on, we couldn't execute. Again, that I think that comes back to Adelaide's perceived pressure that they create from early in the game where you think there's pressure, there's not actually pressure, but you don't execute the way you'd like to anyway, even though you've got time and space because you're not used to it. It almost becomes uh, conditioned within the game, which is quite crazy how that all happens, but... It's all part of footy, I suppose. But, yeah, just it was tough to watch when we were starting to make mount a slight comeback, which we knew was coming. We're, we're a proud side. We're always going to try and sort of mount a bit of a case whether you get close enough or not is another thing. But just there's so many moments throughout the game, mate. We mentioned uh, Friday night. It was that Menegola kick, I think, at one stage um, inside 50. That kick a goal he, he missed from 35 straight in front. Uh, I think Mollop had a bad pass. Selwood streaming out of the middle, and then he kicks it 30 metres into a Crows player that could have put them under enormous pressure had it been a longer kick. I reckon Scott Selwood would have had a few of those throughout the night, and just other players just couldn't. Kick, <laughs> couldn't kick it. It was a bar of soap for them, and we just fumbled. We wilted under the pressure. We we simply were found one thing and weren't good enough in the end. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it speaks more to how good Adelaide are rather than how bad we are. But still, if you're a good side, you you, you make a case either way. But yeah, we, we were just found uh, well off the pace, I think, and certainly Adelaide with their team play, team structure, and I had, that we gave him time and space with the ball, and that uh, yeah, I always say that second kick off half back is huge. And if you if it's a nice easy kick, that sort of sep- separates the uh, the opposition and opens up the whole ground. And then you get that run and overlap, and then you get players running in behind the defence, and then you can get pretty easy goals, which Adelaide do and do quite well. And they went to town on it all night, didn't they? So yes. Um, Contest. I mean, the stats, when you look at them, we weren't smashed, but when you look at what Adelaide did, it was very effective and very clean with what they did compared to what we did with it. Um, won the free kick count, interestingly enough. Um, down in clearances by six, but it's all about m- making the most and being the most efficient with the ball when you've got it and being as damaging as possible, and we just weren't, uh, weren't able to execute in that area. And, yeah, look, we tackled well, but... Um, 
There you go. Just goes to show, mate, first of the footy. And yeah. being able to run run and carry and just uh, make the most of your chances, and we just didn't. So, yeah, yeah, it's an interesting position where it leaves us all, and I'm sure at some stage in the coming weeks, mate, we might even have a bit of a chat about where the Cats list is at, and maybe even in the play review might uh, feature a little bit of a, a preview to that. So, yeah, not happy, mate. Not happy at all. But uh, have you, if you said at the start of the year, would you like to make a prelim final? I'd say yes, and we said we'd finish anywhere between twelve. Uh, sorry, second to twelfth, depending on circumstances. And uh, you'd take it, but you're still left wondering what if. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, mate. Well, we wouldn't be supporters if we weren't uh, disappointed with it. So, uh, yeah, good effort to make it there, Cats. Uh, disappointing with the way we finish, but I'm sure we'll remember that Sydney final for many years to come and at least take that out of the season as a positive with a big win with a club that's had the wood over us and uh, to dominate them the way they dominate uh, have dominated clubs over this year. Um, I'll take that and in my stride and hopefully hopefully we can make it somewhere near it uh, in the coming year years <laughs> see what happens but um we'll move into the votes mate and left to two few as you said um there'll be a couple i think standouts but how'd you say it Yeah, pretty similar. I could uh, flip a coin with the three votes with uh, Selwood and Motlop. I think on the night I've said Motlop with the three, uh, the 26 touches, three marks, and three tackles and kicked a nice goal as well from the pocket, which is a ripper, um, trying to get his side back in the game. But, yeah, again, he's uh, he's been really clean. He's taken the game on. He's been really effective when he has got the ball. And, yeah, he's got, got a little bit of mongrel back into him and I don't know what's happened, whether Scotty's tapped in, had tapped into him or whether he's got, over, got over injuries. I'm not really sure what sort of happened there or whether he realises he's a guy that needs to perform, otherwise he's out and who knows. So, yeah, look, I liked his game. He provided a bit of a spark when we, which we needed and, yeah, liked the way he went about it. Uh, the Selwood, Joel, got two votes. 34 touches, a couple of marks, and got a few free kicks, which is good. Six free kicks, four. Ten tackles, which is massive, and also kicked a, a goal as well. Captain's goal. Yeah, he, in the second half, when we were down and out, he he just willed himself. He, he was left, left no stone unturned. He was just like a beast, just even though it was nearly impossible, he tried to just 
get his side back into the game or at least put some respectability on the scoreboard. And and you were spot on, mate, before the start of the night. You said, I expect Joel to play a big game. And you thought, yep, he's, he's due for a big one. It's pretty rare you say that about Joel. But as we know, he's, he's playing hurt and he's done that's as courageous as he gets when he hurts, after, hurts himself after he's already injured. Um, playing with an injury and he goes back out again. That's that speaks volumes to him and, the, and I guess the club. <laughs> um, yeah, Dangerfield obviously gets the one vote as well. Um, Twenty-four touches, got three marks, th- three free kicks, nine tackles, which was again a very good effort from the two superstars there and two goals, three. Uh, again, yeah, he tried really hard in the first half and as you sort of mentioned, and again, yeah, he he tried super hard. He was pretty bad with the footy. Tough under pressure and tough. <laughs> it's tough on blokes that actually do get the football, like you sort of mentioned. But yeah, I'll say it pretty similarly. He, he would he would have done everything he could have to try and get us at least close to being in the game. And yeah, look, there weren't too many others really to sort of yeah <laughs> sort of uh, give a mention. Mitch Duncan was okay. Nothing. I mean, numbers look all right on a, the numbers look okay, but yeah, I wouldn't say his impact was uh, great. Good stuff, mate. Absolutely spot on. And uh, we'll move into the play review. And this will be, I guess, a slight preview on, um, yeah, I suppose, list management for the Cats going forward. Obviously, want to do a video later in the piece of um, where the Cats are at with maybe a bit of a sort of wash-up review kind of thing for the season. But, yeah, I mean, over the course of the night and, I guess, a bit of a look ahead to the Cats list and expectations for next year and the year, years beyond that. Um, how do you see the, that side of things, mate? Yeah, I obviously won't go super deep into it, but as you say, it would be good to do a bit of a wash-up. But, yeah, my thoughts are, are pretty provocative, maybe, on, on where the Cats are at. Not everyone may agree, but I've already said it to you and, and the guys, of course. But well, I think it's time that we really do dedicate ourselves to the draft again and and find ways to get ourselves higher up that order. I think our first pick's 21 at the moment, and then it does drop off a bit. And, and the reason for that is because we have gone out and got your Hendersons and your Dangerfields and your Tuies and, and tried to patch ourselves up to a premiership, which is absolutely the right thing to do but I just feel that it hasn't worked and I, I can't see it. I can't see our curve going up I feel like we've probably peaked I mean the fact that one again goes out Mackie doesn't hurt us as much on field but even still you just don't know what you lose until they're gone in the back half um, mm. so who fills those roles it, it could be difficult and a lot of talk about Stringer and Hadley getting them in I wouldn't be absolutely against Stringer if we felt we could unlock his full potential because he is still quite young. But I think Gaz is the, the way to go. I, I used to think that if we were in the Premiership window, then by all means do so. But I just don't feel we are in that Premiership window. So it is going to be tough to see how much footy we think Gaz has got in him. But mm. I think we should be rushing out to get an injured 34 year old. As much as I would love him to return, from a romantic point of view, I would absolutely love him. And part of me wishes they still do it anyway, but I think <laughs> from a management point of view, it's probably not a good thing to do. We'll probably talk about a few of our actual players a little bit more in the wash-up, but there is a long list that I think will have hard calls made of them. The most public and media talked about guys that might want to men's and I tend to agree, I think, Certainly Mansell should go. I, I know he's done some good things, but you know, he's in he's in the side for his class and finishing and even that preliminary final he didn't even offer that. I made a shocking decision when he shot on goal instead of passing and, and missed some shed shots as well. So I really think he might have a little bit of currency. Maybe he can get us a bit higher in that draft order. Yeah. Second pick line, maybe? I think really deserves a bit more discussion than thirty seconds. It's really interesting. I have a feeling they'll probably stick with him just with what they've done and what he's done of late. But I'd probably prefer to offload him and see what we could get because 
I don't have any real stats or numbers to back it up, but I just don't feel like we'll see this great football consistently. If, if you could say to me, yes, the penny's dropped and you'll produce this, and of course you keep it, but it's just something inside me that says, I don't think we're going to see him maintain that level. Um, so that's where I'm at with him. But there's a number of other guys, but my overriding feeling is I do hope we can get ourselves up in that draft order, get a few picks in the top 30, and just try and find some genuine talent, because uh, I think we need that, because we've got a few guys who are middle-tier fellas in the Murdochs, and even someone like a Thurlow, Lang. I mean, where are these guys at? I think maybe it's time to go to that draft. If you get Stringer, all well and good, but don't burn a quality young guy. Um, before I pass it over to you, mate, I, I saw a photo that popped up on Facebook. It was way back when we recruited in those lovely drafts of the early 2000s with Lingy, Chappie, Jono, Kelly, Rook, Enright, I think, all sitting around Bomber Thompson. And at the time, we had no idea these guys were going to be absolute superstars of the competition, but I think that's where we need to get back to. It's what made our club great. I think we need to pick these guys from the draft and we won't know if they're going to be our next premiership players in a month's time when the draft's on but I think they might be the guys who take us rather than a stringer or a motlock or someone like that so back yourself in Wellesie and find us some more gold because that's what we need so that's where I'm at mate how about yourself? Yeah look I'll probably discuss a few of those you mentioned but yeah, you know, I did listen to the radio a little bit the other day, and I think I was Damien Barrett on Triple M, just sort of saying that the Abbott deal is basically all but done. I know I don't know what that technically means. Uh, being I'm not super uh, savvy, I suppose, with the trade and draft side of things. Like, so that to me probably means that behind the scenes they they could have negotiated something, and it'll just be a matter of formalities in the trade period. I take that with a grain of salt until I see pen to paper with that and see if Gold Coast are willing to give that up. Um, I'm I'm on the fence with it, and I can understand why you'd want to go to the draft. I'm not saying definitely get Gary Ablett and definitely get Stringer, but Kingy made a pretty good point, I guess, on, and he says this a lot about premierships are hard to win. It's interesting because like, I think Stringer and Ablett would be handy for the club, but... I don't, I don't see like we're a stringer and an applet away from a premiership. I feel like there, it has to be something within the club as an intangible uh, element or idiosyncrasy where, whereby just, I guess, um, puts brings the club together, kind of like a, a Richmond and Western Bulldogs. You've got that united harmony between one another and just an absolute, I don't know, <laughs> just absolute dedication to getting the, the end result, which is a premiership. So... We say a lot, it's system over players. Obviously, you've got to have the players to be able to implement the system. And so, sort of like, is it the chicken or the egg to, to win the premiership? You look at Richmond and Adelaide, they've got really good players and a lot of great role players that underpin a very good system. And I think we can generally bring our system most weeks against um, sides we're maybe not expected to win, not too sure. But um, and other tough games, i.e. this one, and I guess qualifying final and in finals in general, sometimes that system can go missing when the other side gets on top of us. But, yeah, look, again, don't throw the kitchen sink at those guys, I'd say, um, if it doesn't impinge us too much for draft prospects and things, uh, then you maybe think about it. But I'll leave that in their hands. And uh, interesting with Scotty's comments, I don't know if you got a chance to see the full press, mate, um, he made a comment about starting over. Uh, what did you read and said? I, I think I'm not sure whether he means next year. We'll see how we go again. Recruit a few more. See how we go. Did, did you read it as that, or did you think it was maybe something more to it? I uh, yeah, I know. I know. I did hear that. I, I think he more so meant starting over from a, a ladder perspective, and that was the Underline an extremely competitive 
Yeah, the uh, bloody seven broadcasts chopped off that other six minutes. So it was, yeah. it was stupid, but good to um, listen in. I guess on the AFL website. Yeah, Mensal Motlop probably all but gone. Um, there's no pen to paper, which means that they could be using that as bargaining power for the blokes I'm just talking about, Stringer and Ablett. And yeah, there's a long list of players that have been on there for a good five years. They're around the three to seven year mark, and just haven't really offered anything. So. Yeah, look, I'm I'm just looking now. Ray Stanley just quite simply has to go. We'll, we'll obviously um, yeah dedicate another video to the you know, I guess yeah loose management and a bit of a wash up setup. But um, yeah, look, mate, just not enough winners on the night, and it's not coincidental that it's in another final and another big final. Um, not quite getting the job done. Scotty almost seems to think it's it's uh, unlucky we didn't bring our best footy on on these nights and it's it's certainly no coincidence with um, the opposition and how we fare under the intense heat. Yeah, absolutely. I think you're coming to that. Um, on the night, didn't win. And just starting back to a couple of those, you know, and Stringer talk, um, certainly good thoughts and I suppose at the end of the day, it's all dependent on what the deal is, isn't it? Yeah, and I can't remember if I even fully mentioned it. I, I think, as yeah, Kingy said a lot, premierships are super hard to win. So whether you go, even if you go out on a limb with one more year of uh, trying the old Hawthorne patch up a, a position and try and still contend, whether you go to get Stringer and Ablett and if you're still off the pace, you then probably cut your losses, I think, and, yeah, go back to the draft and heavily look invest into that after probably next year because we've still got... You would like to see Selwood and Dangerfield hold up a Premiership Cup. Yeah, e- even, yeah, if it, yeah, even if it yeah, does... Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I guess I'll, I'll I'll just mention one more point. I feel like we've been discussing this bit for ten minutes. Um, I think even you go back to 2010 when we got blown out of the water against Collingwood. Obviously, a change of coach and um, a star offloading was yeah, Gaz. There you go, offloading. Um, yeah, and a bit of change and stuff around the organisation. We winning the premiership the year after was quite big. Um, so I mean, getting flogged in a prelim. Yeah, I mean, isn't a great sort of sign, but um, yeah, I don't think we're as far off as we think we are, but I don't think we're as close as we think we are, so <laughs> I'll sit on the fence to that one, but um, yeah, I mean, if you're, we are somewhat around the mark, we're not quite there, but um, I think, yeah, the coaches and the recruiting staff will know more there, and um, yeah, let's, yeah, we're probably hoping for a Stringer and Ablett to say to the world, yeah, we've given it one last crack and if not, we'll uh we'll really invest in the draft in the in the future and start looking forward. Yeah, absolutely mate. Good stuff. Love it. Alrighty, so that's uh pretty much it from us mate. We know we're talking about next week because <laughs> uh we're done and dusted but it's the Tikes and the Crows in the grand final and um uh, yeah, look, 
pleased with, I guess, finishing where we finished. Uh, disappointing with the final outcome, I suppose. And, um, yeah, great great to get there, I guess. Again, yeah, you'd like to be in that last Saturday. And as you say, made a lot. 17 clubs a year fail and one goes home happy. Yep, that's our fortunate reality, isn't it? <laughs> so that means 98% or potentially nearly 100% of the time football is absolutely emotionally traumatising for any supporter. <laughs> Nope. No, bingo. All right. Good stuff, Manny. Um, so that's it for us with the uh, the Cats reviews this season. We'll get a bit of a wash-up happening in the coming weeks and have a bit of a, a bit of a look for the Cats and see what the, a bit of a bird's-eye view of the list and things like that. But, uh, Manny, it's been a massive pleasure to have you on board again this year and, uh, yep, going well with the Cats reviews and providing that sort of second opinion and insight into the game and providing extra feedback and... Yeah, it's been uh, fantastic having you on board as always, mate, and um, hopefully have you alongside next year for enjoying another roller coaster season again, no doubt. Nah, thanks, mate. It's been good to talk some footy with you, mate. It's all good. <laughs> We're talking footy. <laughs> good stuff, Shorty. Thanks, matey. Um, so, yeah, that's it from us, guys. Cat's no good in the prelim final, going down by 10 goals, but... Hopefully back big, better and stronger for to season 2018 and stay around for the uh, wash-up, which we'll do in the coming weeks, as mentioned throughout the uh, the podcast. So, again, thanks for joining on the roller coaster. It's been the cat season. Reasonable finish, but hopefully get an even better result in season 2018. So, thanks very much for joining in, guys. Really appreciate it. Subscribe for more of these, and we'll keep them coming thick and fast, and uh, that'll be great. Thanks once again. We'll see you guys all next time.